Well, so as everyone knows, yesterday we had some pretty big important announcements when it came to banning. Paradox Engine got banned, Iona got banned, and Painter Servant got unbanned. We here at the channel said, let's get together and discuss this, as we all had very, very strong opinions on it. So we all got together and talked about it. This is what we had to say. Enjoy. So the banning of Paradox Engine, I feel like, was something that a lot of people saw coming or wanted to come from normal EDH. Uh, from the competitive standpoint, I feel like a lot of people are going to miss the card. Uh, but I feel like it's going to actually strive like new decks to be made and new ideas to be created for new commanders. Like I feel like Food Chain decks are going to have a resurgent that I feel like was lacking in the past, and a lot of new decks are going to have room to flourish. I mean, I th you guys know my view on the ban list, and I, I like, for me, Paradox Engine's like not even in the top three of problem call like cards for like EDH that are like main defenders, at least for me. But I, I definitely see why it's banned because as soon as it resolves in like a game of normal EDH, the like the power level you or like the power and like mana you can produce out of it is just like insane. Like four and five times what your opponents can. So I mean, I understand why it was banned for normal EDH. I don't think I don't agree with the ban, but I understand the like premise of it. Okay, so for Paradox Engine in competitive, it was definitely a like backup to having dramatic reversal when you had Ice Crown Scepter already, and that's fine. Um, and then you know, as you guys were mentioning, decks just aren't going to function like. Arkham or SSA, and then some are not going to run as well, like Paradox after Paradox. Uh, for casual, though, so as EDH as a whole, I think it's fine. Uh, I mean, when I when that when that set was first being spoiled, I think that Paradox Engine was the first masterpiece that was spoiled. I can't uh, confirm that, but a friend of mine and I were looking at the spoilers. And we were both like, uh, what is going on here? That that border looks really weird, and that effect is way too good. Like, is this even real? And sadly, it was. And I've seen tons of casual games just completely flip the script when a Paradox Engine came out, even if people were not trying to build around it, because it basically just gave you multiple reuses out of everything that you had on the it almost gave your creatures vigilance if you, you know, played that kind of deck. And I've even seen people get salty when they would play the Paradox Engine with nothing to do with it, and then somebody would destroy it because it was Paradox Engine. And then I've, in those situations, I've seen them not choose to destroy the engine, and then that player went off and won, like, a couple turns later because of just what it does to their board. So I think I think it's fine. The competitive scene will uh, adjust. If certain decks like Food Chain or Flash decks become better, that's fine. And I think the casuals will be happy that it's gone. So I think overall it's a fine decision. Uh, I also think this is a big boon to a lot of the ec uh, kind of the behind the scenes and economics of kind of some of the players in CDH. People that have like the one trick decks like Sisayer. Uh, Arkham or decks that use Paradox Engine as their win con for people to play competitive, if that was the only deck they owned, basically all the cards they owned also dropped in price a lot if you didn't, if you guys haven't tracked like what Arkham's price and stuff is at right now a lot of those commanders have gone down and stuff like that too, so economically Paradox Engine has also drastically decreased the price of a lot of other cards I don't think that it's good for the format I think that it's just one win con and a sea of win cons, but like, it wasn't impressive. I mean, we now we just have Flash Hulk and like, more. There's gonna be more Flash Hulk, more demonic consultation, and more Kirog. You know. Are you saying it's not good for the format? Like, it's not good that it's banned, or that it's not good that it's. Oh, that it's banned. Like it. I mean, it just made the format less diverse. Okay, so I had a lot of. <clears throat> very strong opinions actually about Paradox Engine. From its very inception, um, I saw how busted and broken it was. It, it completely, in a single card, shifts in your favor. And I've heard over and over and over again, well, 
oh, this is this card isn't uh, this card isn't good on its own. It does nothing on its own. And I think a really important part to think about with this card is it's hard not to make everything better because this isn't just like, oh, well, you have to put mana rocks. No, it's just you, you can put anything in there that has a tap ability and it suddenly became a lot better the moment that the Paradox Engine hit the battlefield. So from a competitive standpoint, I feel like this was kind of a big shockwave or a kind of a big blow to the competitive community. Should it have been banned from a competitive standpoint? <sighs> Probably not. <laughs> so that's the tough part. Um, from a casual standpoint, people hated it. People hated it from a casual standpoint. And unfortunately, because we don't have separate uh, band lists, we kind of have to adhere to the global. I think overall, it was a it was a really good banning for casual commander because that's what everybody plays anyways. It was it was a good banning there because nobody likes playing against it. And then that and and casual EDH, it's completely busted in half. Yeah. Yeah, can we talk about the real atrocity of Iona being banned? Like, this was a CDH staple here, boys. I know, four how, how will I play any white deck in CDH now? I loved Ad Nauseam being into it and dying. I know. Yeah. Yep, Dark Hop it up, flip what? Iona. You will be play, missed play as a CDH shadow. staple, Iona. You glorious, yeah, glorious angel. Oh. Okay, moving on. Anyways, this card's trash. No one cares. <laughs> <laughs> it means nothing to any of us. I don't think that Iona and Painter Servant should exist together in the same format, or at least since they do in Legacy, then it doesn't matter because they have much more powerful things to do in Legacy and Vintage. Um, it's yeah, kind of. It can take a player completely out of the game if they're playing monocolored, and yes, it can protect itself in a way by taking away a color that would get rid of it. And I can see casuals being salty about having an Iona named again. But I don't think that it's the worst thing. It's really the Painter Sermon thing. Like, I think that those two are, like, they swapped positions on the ban on ban list simultaneously. Like, one wouldn't have happened without the other. So I can understand why it would happen. Because otherwise you just go... Um, tooth and Nail, Painter Servant, Iona, and then Cyclonic Rift your opponents. And then they can't cast anything for the rest of the game. Or any bounce everything spell. Uh, what's the upheaval? That, that's banned anyway. But you know, Sunder, Cyclonic Rift, uh, exec uh, Evacuation, anything like that. But things like Wash Out just suddenly got a lot better. Because Painter Servant. Choose the color. Wash yeah. Out. Float man, oh, yeah. tooth and you know, or whatever. Hibernation, life force, a yep. lot of things can be interesting with everything being a color. Yeah, that's right. And I can understand from a casual point of view, like why you wouldn't want it reanimated and why you wouldn't want it cast against you. But if it's like turn seventeen and someone casts an Iona naming one of your three colors, then you should be able to take care of it some other way. So it's not the worst thing ever that it's gone. Because I don't think that it was that detrimental to that many people like Paradox Engine was, or is, I guess. But I can see them with Painter Servant coming back, it them not coexisting. And I'm fine with them not coexisting because, like with New Karn, people are just going to jam Karn and try to Mycosis and Vlad as Null Cone people. Yeah. So I get sense. it. It's fine. I don't think it was the worst thing ever. Really, I think that they should have removed some other things like Coalition Victory because that yeah. doesn't jack. Yeah, there's like five or six cards that should have been unbanned way, way before Painter Servant. I think we can all agree on that. Yeah, though, well, I guess I'll save that for when we talk about Painter Servant. But yeah, Iona, yeah, yeah. fine. The staple um, of our format, yeah. gone. Yeah, I know. Most of the biggest reason, I think, was because Painter Servant came back and they didn't want it to coexist. And if they were planning on unbanning Painter Servant, then I'm fine with Iona not also, you know, them cohabitating the same format, a, a not more powerful format. Like, okay, one Iona is not super oppressive unless you're playing against a monocolor deck in that color. Then it sucks. But if you're even if you're playing two color, 
it's like still manageable and Iona gets blown out by like single target, like any removal spell whatsoever. Like she's just like a seven on seven. Probably no competitive, probably some casual. It's probably just a few yeah. it's definitely a feel bad when it happens, but it's not that it's it's that yeah, it's not like persistent. Armageddon pass, like yeah. that bad. So So my last point on Iona is in a vacuum, I don't think that it should be banned. Yes, it's feel bad, but it's not, you know, like the boogeyman or anything. However, parallel to Painter Servant coming back, 100% ban it. I mean, I kind of disagree with that because, like, if it's, in, in EDH, there's like, shoot, probably like 52 card combos that either A, win the game, or B, lock your opponents out. There's, there's just like so many others, like Mycosynth, Vandal Blast, off the top of the head. <sighs> like, I don't think that's good. Like, there's for eleven mana, like tooth and nail entwined is nine, and that's one card. I think part of it is like to kind of piggyback off what you said. I think part of it is how some people will play land destruction without a plan, and then just pass the turn, like oh, are we yeah, getting past turn or wildfire past, turn, and not have a game plan yeah. and just kind of sit there and do it for the sake of doing it. And that might be people's problem with Iona. Like, I'll name the most common color. Okay, go. And then they just sit there for the game. And then and then the feel-bads come when you can't play the game anymore. As opposed to, like, You're dead. I'm fine with getting... Like, yeah, I'm fine with getting Kiki Zealous did because the game's over. I don't have to sit there. Like, there's no chance yeah, of me like coming it. back from that. Yeah. I'm fine you. with getting Flabman consultationed or Tainted Pack did. Okay. Because... But so <laughs> I think what people more, did... Yeah. It's just I own a pass, and then like, uh, now what? And then you have to sit through basically all these turns of these attack phases where you're getting hit for seven, and then everyone's got to whittle you down essentially the equivalent of 120 life through the course of you know attack phases of seven seven every turn, which is just grueling because you draw your card, now you can't pass anything, and then pass the turn, and it's just it's it's very like you said feel bad situation. Yeah, so basically that's what mine was going to be. My my opinions on Iona basically is is uh, throw everyone a bone because you're about to bring off Painter Servant. Okay, so the clear problems with Iona would be, or I'm sorry, the clear problems with Painter Servant would be one, Iona, and two, uh, Ugin the Spirit Dragon. You know, play Ugin for eight, everything's that color, exile everything, you know? So basically exile everyone's lands for the minus zero, because it's this minus X ability. They're not going to get rid of Ugin, but Iona, she can be in your command zone, and you can put Painter Servant into it because it's colorless. So it just steers a little bit more towards the potential for it to be a bad, bad situation. And like you said, Folger, it goes into the... Uh, philosophy. They have their philosophy document of where they kind of base the game on, where they base the idea of how they do bannings, how they do rules, how they approach this entire format. And one of the things is uh, one of the things that they consider for getting rid of a card is the point that says anything that prevents players from contributing to the game in a meaningful way. So if you lock out somebody with Iona, you're in a situation now where that person can't contribute to the game in a meaningful way. And because of that, I think that's why they said, well, now with Painter's Servant, you know, before Iona was just kind of on the fringe, no one really played her, but she really wasn't a bad thing. We might see a bad resurgence in the wrong direction with more people playing Iona simply because of Painter's Servant. So I think that's part of the reason that she got the hammer. So. Yeah, I think that's why. Um, honestly, people are gonna run grindstone, and people are what? What is it? They're the Johnnies of the world, not the spikes, <laughs> not the Timmies, but they're the Johnnies. You're gonna see the grindstones. You're gonna see the Sphinx's tutelage, and you're gonna see some people trying to make Painter Servant work. Painter Servant is not in your command zone like Iona is. You're gonna have to tutor it up. You're gonna have to get it in your opening hand. You're gonna have to find a way to get Painter Servant and X. So Painter Servant and whatever it is, Painter Servant Grindstone, uh, Painter Servant uh, Sphinx's Tutelage, or whatever. I don't think it's going to affect uh, CDH in any truly meaningful way. 
Um, because like, oh yeah, cool. I'll play Pain and Shimmering Grindstone, and then I'll untap Grindstone with wait, Paradox Engine banned. Uh, but <laughs> that joke aside, uh, I just don't think it's gonna have an impact up in CDH, and I really just don't think it's gonna have a huge impact like anywhere really. Like people are gonna run it. They're gonna try to make it good, but like I don't, I just don't see it as a viable win con. You can only hit one player with it unless you use Voltaic Key to get someone else with it. Um, it's volatile to Nexus of Fate. All of the any card that basically says shuffle back into the deck when it's put in the graveyard, like goes like Ulmog. Um, and I just, I just think it's not there. There's 500 combos, Matt. Like two card combos. Yeah, I guess if anything, um, Helm, uh, Helm of Obedience, rest in peace, just got another win con to add to their deck, if that's what they were doing to begin with. Um, those types of decks that use that ley line or, um, you know, grind plus painter servant, if they're looking for something like that, they just got another two card combo. And the combo is colorless, so that helps. You know, um, so it can be jammed into multiple decks. So if you have yeah, a leyline helm combo, it can jam in there. If you have a leyline, I'm sorry, a helm rest in peace combo, it can also jam in there. So it gives them another redundant one if they want one. But I don't think it's messing up the format on any level. I mean, any no, level whatsoever. No. You still have to kill one no. one, point, one one at a time. You can't just kill the whole table with it. Like Ryan said, it's basically just a cheaper colorless. Helm of Obedience, uh, rest in peace. Which didn't see much play as it is. Which in the like, okay, like if it's colorless, it's better, and if it's cheaper, it's better. But like, compare that to like the the, the t other top ten win cons, it doesn't crack the top ten. I don't, at least in CEDH. And no. I think in CEDH, a lot of stacks got another win con. Because uh, stacks want to draw out a long game, a lot of resource denial and stuff like that. So sometimes stacks can win out of nowhere, but a lot of times stacks is look to draw out the long game. Um, a, a competitive Lavinia deck, for example, could use the painter's um, you know grindstone to their advantage. They can take out a player or maybe take out a player with something else, and they can use that for double redundancy. Um, but like I said earlier, it's still not format breaking or anything, or even, I mean... To even say it's going to cause any sort of ripple in the in the CEDH community would say would be saying a lot, to be honest. Yeah, that'd be bold. Like, so I'm sure there will be it'll see maybe some French play, like you said, in like a Lavinia deck. But I so com in comparison to the Paradox Engine Band, this is like very 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 tiny or like yeah, exactly so. That's everything. There's so many cards in Magic. Just like Mike said, there's so many two-card combos out there. To throw Pain or Servant into the mix, is it really going to um, disrupt the format anytime soon? And they've and they've had a lot of success with their unbannings in the past. You know, Metalworker got unbanned, and it's been doing just fine. It didn't completely destroy the format. Um, right. And um, uh, Protean Hulk definitely saw a ripple in our pocket of the EDH world, which is the competitive scene. Um, we see yep. tons of Flash Hulk decks now that definitely are a major part of the meta, and you do have to account for them. So that was something, but in the EDH community as a whole, they're like, eh, whatever, you know. I I would have liked to see like if they were doing a you know I mean if if they were even considering like competitive, I would have liked to see you know maybe like a Flash ban and also a Paradox Engine ban because something like that would have opened the meta up a lot more to other combos. Um, but as it stands right now, I think that Flash Hulk and Demonic Consultation will just be the go-tos and the other decks might just not be as good anymore. I don't know. Well, I definitely think we officially lost three decks. Urza, Arkham, and Paradox. I'm sorry, Ur Urza, Arkham, and Sisse. Those are just wiped out. Their main, their main crux and their main strategy has been nerfed to the point where they're no longer primary. Yes, yes, they can still see some competitive play. Uh, Arkham existed before Paradox, but let's face it, it was Paradox that put Arkham into the Tier 1 category. So um, to take away Paradox is definitely going to make it 
like, like you said, it's, you know, to see Flash in there, it would completely, I mean, it would earthquake the meta to take Flash and Paradox yeah. out. I mean, exactly. everyone would almost scramble to try and find new uh, new things to do. Like, it would just completely disrupt everything. And that would be kind of cool, to be honest. That you would know? be and cool. There'd exactly. be some hurt feelings and some salty, you know, people about it. But, man, what would that would do to our, you know, what would that do to our meta? It would be insane. Yeah, or even a Thrasios ban. Hey, yeah. Let's not get crazy now. <laughs> so I think that Painter's Servant effect is unique enough to where it will unlock some interesting ideas. I don't think that it necessarily will make a, necessarily make a ripple in CEDH because even the infamous Rip Helm combo still only kills one player. But that, like I would imagine Painter's Servant, if it did find its way into CEDH, is only going to kill one person at a time with grindstone and is a two card combo that these i mean helm doesn't do anything by itself uh rip is fine as like a hate random hate piece but even against like some decks painter servant might you know jostle some things and grindstone could definitely annoy like top deck tutors and that kind of i think it'll be a fun build around card because of how unique it is uh with casual adh like on the casual side, there are random things that will just amplify, which we're probably not even fully aware of right now. That's and then, a good point. and then on the competitive side, it might find its way into some of the grindier decks. Casual side, I'm sure people are gonna just jam it to see what happens. Well, I mean, it actually gets pretty insane with Painter Servant because anything, any creature that you play lets you both search and put it into your hand. <sighs> That's yeah, because so yeah, because I yeah. think I think they color shift him to green. Or they color shift his blue to green currently, so then they'll just paint everything blue. So that way, all the green creatures do both. I think that they should. I think the rules committee should include some people or have some representatives, or we should have some liaisons from the competitive community to also weigh in on these things. Because if we had like. Dan and Siggy of the Lab Maniacs, then they may have been able to be like, well, no, Paradox Engine isn't that bad, or, you know, or whatever. Talk about, I think they had a whole video about things that should and shouldn't be on the ban list. So, like, those thoughts coming into play, too. I think representative, representation on the CAG would be fantastic. Um, I think we do have some representation on the CAG. Uh, the guy from Commander and he advocates for CEDH, although not really a CEDH player. Um, Josh Lee Kwai, he thinks of us when he puts his recommendations. Um, but to have a true dedicated CEDH representative would really be great because they can go more to the wall for certain topics like they would maybe go more to the wall for paradox engine or maybe go more towards hey let's really get flash banned here because uh having that actual dedicated resource into cedh would give much more of a voice in the cag i think that's like the best case scenario at least uh, most definitely for us cards that are problems for us i would say not i can't say across the board but majority of the time are very either not played in, in casual or not good in casual. So I think it'd be great if we had like some form of, like a voice on the a tag. A voice. Perfect. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Well, that about wraps it up. We really appreciate everyone joining us today and listening to our opinions. That's all they were, were opinions and nothing more. Um, if you want to listen to this whole video, we have the full uncut that's going to be available on our Patreon. Uh, this entire recording was actually over an hour long. Uh, another thing is we would really love to hear what you guys have to say on this. Do you agree with our views? Do you disagree? We would love to hear it in the comments below. Uh, thanks again for watching, and we will see you next time.